Hi Biology 400, this is your Central Dogma of Molecular Biology screencast, session four on RNA synthesis, that is transcription of uh, DNA into RNA, and then uh, RNA processing. Let's get right to it. Let's look at, um, let's have you look at the learning targets on page 69 in your unit booklet. Though That's the list of all the things you should know and be able to do as a result of viewing this screencast and getting through this part of our unit of study. We're also going to be looking at a couple of related activities here. You'll be working on the Central Dogma tutorial parts 1 through 3. That's pages 71 through 73 in your unit booklet by looking at a variety of web links and answering questions uh, about what you've viewed on those web links or web pages. And then there's a lot of referential material, diagrams, and, and that sort of thing on pages 79 through 90 of your unit packet. If you're looking at your textbook, chapter 9, section 3, and section 4 are good to view. All right. First of all, let's talk about RNA. <clears throat> we already know a lot about DNA and DNA structure, so a good way to learn about RNA is to compare RNA with DNA and to also contrast it. That is to say how it's the same and how it's different. Um, <clears throat> first of all, you need to know that RNA, like DNA, is a nucleic acid. The N and the A refer to nucleic acid. Um, like DNA, it is what we call a polynucleotide. That is, it's many, many nucleotides all linked together. But when we look at DNA and RNA, the nucleotides are different. And one of the main differences is that in DNA, the sugar, the five carbon sugar, is called deoxyribose. And RNA nucleotides contain a five carbon sugar that's called ribose. The difference between those two is what's bonded to the second carbon of the five carbons. In DNA, we just have an H bonded to the second carbon, whereas in RNA, the ribose sugar has uh, an O and an H, that is a hydroxyl. Another thing to look at in terms of their differences is the uh, bases that are found in the nucleotides. In DNA, we have thymine, whereas in RNA, we have uracil. <clears throat> Again, both these types of molecules, DNA and RNA, are polynucleotides, but when you look at DNA, it's a double polynucleotide. So there's two sides or two strands of polynucleotides that are hydrogen bonded uh, to one another, whereas in RNA, it's just a single strand or a single polynucleotide. You need to know that RNA is the type of nucleic acid that's critical from, for getting information from DNA out of the nucleus to out to the ribosomes where uh, the information in our genes is translated into protein structures. <clears throat> there are four types of RNA and we're going to go through them one by one here. Um, but I do want you to understand here that when we look at DNA, um, you need to know that DNA provides the template or the basis of information for all these different types of RNA. And there are four types of RNA, tRNA, mRNA, rRNA, and snRNA. So we'll go through all these different uh, types here. <clears throat> when we look at mRNA, I want you to understand that mRNA is what actually encodes specifically the amino acid sequence uh, the order of the amino acids when a polypeptide or a protein protein is initially built. And when you look at this diagram, it kind of looks like DNA, except half of it's missing, which is exactly what we've been talking about, uh, the structure of RNA. It's a single strand. It's a single helix, as you see it here, not a double helix. Another interesting thing here is that the nucleotides are grouped in threes, and those groups of three nucleotides are referred to as codons, and understanding how those operate and work in the next uh, part of our unit of study here in translation is going to be critical. This is a message that comes from the nucleus and goes out to the ribosomes and this is why it's called messenger RNA. tRNA, uh, the T comes from a couple of things. Really when you look at this structure it's a single polynucleotide and so if we follow along the track here it starts at a 3 and ends at a 5 or the other way around depending on how you're looking at it. And so it's a single polynucleotide, but parts of the polynucleotide strand are self-complementary, so it folds back on itself in, a, in three different, excuse me, four different regions, and as a result it forms this T-like shape. <clears throat> but it's also named tRNA because of what it does. It also transfers, it bonds to amino acids, and it transfers them to the site of protein synthesis, the ribosome. <clears throat> Ribosomal RNA is our third type of RNA. It's named rRNA. Um, that R, that first R stands for ribosomal. 
And I just want you to understand that ribosomes are composed of, uh, along with protein, ribosomal RNA is the other component. <clears throat> And then our fourth type of RNA is what we call small nuclear RNA, which is involved in what we call splicing or processing of mRNA, so it's ready to um, leave the nucleus after that process. Let's talk about how mRNA is built. And when we talk about synthesis of mRNA, we have to start with what we call a protein encoding gene. Now, DNA never actually leaves the nucleus to be decoded. It's uh, mRNA that's going to leave the nucleus to be decoded. We never want our entire genome to leave our nucleus to go be decoded. What's happening is ribosomes decode one gene at a time. So let's talk about what a gene is. A gene is a segment of DNA that actually encodes a particular protein, which leads to a physical trait or lends itself to uh, contributing to a physical trait or characteristic. And there are three regions of a gene that we're going to talk about. The first region is our promoter, and the second region is our RNA coding sequence. And the third region here is our terminator. This whole thing is what we refer to, what we refer to as a gene. It's this yellow or this middle region that actually is the template of DNA that the RNA, the mRNA is built from. <clears throat> So I have a little animation for you to watch here so you can learn a little bit uh, initially about the process of transcription. The synthesis of messenger RNA is called transcription. Transcription begins when RNA polymerase recognizes and binds to the promoter region on the double-stranded DNA molecule. A particular subunit of the messenger RNA, called the sigma factor, participates in recognition of the promoter region. Soon after transcription is initiated, the sigma factor dissociates from the RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase moves along the template strand of the DNA, synthesizing the complementary single-stranded messenger RNA molecule. Synthesis is in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction, with new nucleotides being added to the 3' prime end of the growing messenger RNA molecule. As the RNA polymerase advances along the DNA, it melts a new stretch of DNA and allows the previous stretch to close. When RNA polymerase reaches a specific sequence of nucleotides on the DNA, called the transcription terminator, a hairpin loop structure forms in the messenger RNA, causing the RNA polymerase and the messenger RNA to dissociate from the DNA. So that's a, a basic animation for you to learn how RNA is built from DNA. But what I want to do now is actually go through a couple of questions here, actually five and let's see if you know the answers to them. So pause the video now and read these questions, see if you can answer them. And now after you've paused it, what I'll do is I'll go through the answers. The segment of DNA molecule where messenger RNA synthesis begins is called the promoter region. The complementary messenger RNA strand that would be synthesized from the DNA base sequence CTGAC would be G-A-C-U-G. The name of the structure that causes the synthesis of RNA to cease, that is the transcription terminator. The synthesis of messenger RNA is called translation, that's actually false. And synthesis of a new strand of messenger RNA is in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Well, let's look at that, let's make sure we understand. The old DNA is read from the 3 to the 5' prime direction, but the new RNA is built from 5 to 3 prime. So let's look at this again. Synthesis of a new strand, yes, that is true. Let's check our answers. Submit that, look at that, we got 5 correct. Let's go back to our presentation. So overall, let's make sure we understand this, DNA is the template or the basis for building RNA. Transcription is the process by which RNA is built from the DNA template. And we're going to talk later about what we call RNA processing, which is what happens to an RNA before um, it's ready to leave the nucleus. And once RNA processing is done, the RNA is ready to leave the nucleus and be translated. 
Let's break down transcription into three steps. Our first step here is initiation, and if you know what initiation means, that's the beginning. <clears throat> now, there's an enzyme that's involved here, uh, along with a variety of other transcription factors, which are associated molecules that helps this particular enzyme do its job. This enzyme we're talking about is RNA polymerase. And like many other enzymes, it has an ASE ending, and it is named for what it does. RNA polymerase polymerizes, or makes, RNA. And what it does is it binds to a promoter, the promoter region of the DNA gene, um, which is a region of uh, nucleotide or nucleobases that signal to the RNA, hey, this is where you need to start doing your transcription. Specifically, one type of promoter is something we call a TATA -ta box, and the TATA -ta box is called that because it has thymine and adenine and thymine and adenine and sometimes a few more adenines thereafter. And the RNA polymerase recognizes that particular sequence of uh, DNA nucleotides, and it knows to initiate transcription there. What RNA actually does is it unzips or untwirls the DNA molecules so that it's open and it adds in new nucleotides according to complementary base pairing sequence. Um, so let's look at an animation of that. So that big green egg looking thing is our RNA polymerase and as it's sitting there it's opened up the DNA molecule so that the uh, nucleotide bases are exposed and new RNA and this red strip here represents the sugar phosphate backbone of the RNA the the new nucleotides are added in a way that they're complementary to the original DNA strand so this new C goes with that G this will be an A that goes with that T that's a U because remember in RNA there's no thymine there's uracil that U goes with the A and and so on and it's built in a five prime to three prime direction. So the phosphodiester bonds are actually made from the <clears throat> third carbon of one uh, ribose sugar to another phosphate to the um, fifth carbon of the next sugar. Now this process can happen at about 60 nucleotides per second and so um, it's pretty quick. Oh, let's make sure we know that that um, second step is what we call elongation. Initiation is the landing of the ribos, the um, RNA polymerase in the right spot. And el elongation, that step is kind of self-implied in what the name is. This is just making the RNA longer. <clears throat> Our third step is the last step, and it's what we call termination. The word termination, or to terminate, means to end. And once um, the RNA polymerase reaches this terminator region, what happens is that little hairpin loop is built and the RNA polymerase doesn't fit quite right in the spot where it's doing its work and so all the, all the uh, enzyme and the transcription factor molecules are released and the process stops. Now at the end of that we've got an mRNA molecule or an RNA molecule but it's not quite ready to leave the nucleus yet because it's got some parts uh, of the nucleotide sequence when aren't, with, that aren't going to be necessary. And so that's what we call it immature or pre-mRNA after this particular step. So the next thing to talk about here is what we call RNA processing. And there's two parts of RNA processing, and that's called modification and splicing. And we have a little animation here that we're going to watch that relates to RNA processing. Most eukaryotic genes are composed of numerous short coding sequences called exons, embedded within stretches of non-coding sequences called introns. The initial messenger RNA molecule, or primary transcript copied from a gene by RNA polymerase, is a faithful copy of the entire gene, including introns as well as exons. Before the primary transcript is translated, the introns are removed by a process called RNA processing or RNA splicing. Particles composed of proteins and a special type of RNA called small nuclear RNA or snRNA play a role in RNA splicing. One kind of small nuclear ribonucleoprotein, snRNP, contains snRNA that can bind to the five prime end of an intron by forming base pairs with complementary sequences on the intron. A different SNRNP binds to the three prime end of the intron. Additional introns interact, 
causing the intron to form a loop, thereby bringing the two ends of the intron together. The large complex of SNRNPs, called a spliceosome, then excises the intron and the exons are joined together. The SNRNPs are then released. So that was a little animation about the modification part of um, turning mRNA, pre-mRNA, or immature mRNA into mature mRNA. And this diagram helps you understand that too. The, the exons end up being eventually translated, but the introns, they're taken out of the pre-mRNA by uh, the structure we call a spliceosome. <clears throat> so um, one good way to remember that is that the exons are the actual part of the mRNA molecule that successfully exits the nucleus, and the introns, because they're taken out of the mRNA, actually stay in the nucleus. They never leave um, the nucleus. When we talk about modification, what we also need to talk about is the addition of two things. One is this five, at the five prime end, we call this the guanosine triphosphate cap. And at the trailer part or the end of the mRNA, we add a whole bunch of uh, adenine nucleotides. Now, this five prime GTP cap serves as a recognition signal for the ribosome to know where to start translation. And the many adenines at the end of the RNA seem to help stabilize the molecule or protect it from being hydrolyzed as it's leaving the nucleus uh, and before it gets out to a ribosome. Let's talk a little bit more about splicing here. And this, this animation here shows you the process again. Um, and to know how this happens, what we've got to visualize is how the intron and the exons end up getting, well, the introns get taken out and the exons get put back together. <clears throat> small nuclear RNPs, or ribonuclear protein particles, and uh, small nuclear RNA is involved in this process. What, these, what the structure is, is called a spliceosome, along with these particles and the looped out intron. That whole structure is called a spliceosome. Uh, and what happens here is where the exon ends and the intron begins, the mRNA molecule is literally broken apart there, and where the two exons, um, well, where one first exon ends and the uh, second exon begins, it's spliced back together. After the modification and after the splicing, we have what call, we call mature mRNA. So the, at that point, the mature mRNA is ready to leave the nucleus and go be translated into uh, amino acid sequences. Just to summarize this process, this is what we talk about in, um, uh, this is how it happens in eukaryotic cells. RNA polymerase reads DNA and it builds complementary nucleotides in a five to three prime direction. And that process results in immature mRNA, which needs to go through modification and splicing to become a mature mRNA. Now, just as a way to um, contrast how things, this process happens in eukaryotes with prokaryotes, we have a quick animation for you to view. Gene information is processed differently in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Because prokaryotes lack a nuclear envelope, messenger RNA, mRNA, can associate with ribosomes in the cytoplasm as the mRNA is being formed. Translation of mRNA into protein begins before transcription is complete. Individual bacterial mRNA molecules often contain transcripts of several genes. By placing genes with related functions on the same mRNA, Bacteria coordinate the synthesis of these proteins. These clustered genes are referred to as an operon. Because eukaryotic cells possess a nucleus, their mRNA must be completely formed and must pass across the nuclear envelope before translation. Eukaryotic mRNAs are modified before they are translated. Introns are removed and the remaining exons spliced together. A 5' cap and a 3' poly-A tail are added. 
the processed mRNA travels to the cytoplasm where translation occurs. In contrast to prokaryotic mRNA, eukaryotic mRNA usually specifies only a single protein. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, that was it. Um, I do hope you um, were taking good notes and you have uh, any questions that you have written down so we can get those answered in class. And uh, I do hope that you're also starting to come up with those so what statements that are all important to link all this information together. So that's it for now, folks. See you later.